Congratulations. You got this new Sony camera. It's got all these bells and whistles and features and you get it home and powered up and you can't figure anything out. And you're frustrated. Well, I got good news for you. This is where Terry Warfield comes in. Let me help you out. What's up, y'all? It's Terry Warfield. I hope you're having a good day or good night. Whatever you're doing, wherever you're at, I hope it's going good. If this is your first time on my channel, I do like filmmaking stuff. I like making motivational feels. I like talking about all things tech, period. Make sure you hit subscribe. Matter of fact, just do it now. Do it now so you don't forget about it. And then hit the notification bell too while you're at it so you get notified when new videos go out. So I know, we just we just got done talking about those Sony cameras, right? And a spade is a spade. As much as I love Sony cameras, they are not the most friendly things to set up out the box. I get it. I get it, man. It's buttons and dials and switches and the menus don't make sense and all that compared to some of the other friendlier cameras to operate. The good thing about Sony though, is there's customizable buttons and menus. And once you actually take the time to set your camera up, like the Sony's are incredible tools, man. And I'm here to save the day. So this is what I'm gonna do with this video. I'm gonna show you how my Sony camera is set up. Now, you can take what I'm doing and basically apply this to any modern Sony cameras because the menu systems are all basically the same. Some of them have more features, obviously. Some of the cameras have more buttons, so some of those layouts and configurations might be different, but the core functionality is the same. Also, let me give you this disclaimer. This is how I choose to set my camera up. My camera setup might be different than the next person's because it all depends on what's important to you while you out in the field to make your job easier so I'm not saying that you need to mirror my settings all I want to do with this video is show you the possibilities and how I have my camera set up now I'm not even using all of the custom buttons and all of that you may or may not like I said what's important is getting the things that you want at your fingertips while you out in the field you don't want to go digging through menus and all of that so that your camera works for you and not against you let's get into it all right so I got the trusty a7 III right here and I actually do a combination of filming and photography so most of my custom settings are geared towards filming because for photography I shoot everything in manual now for video a lot of y'all want to know how to set the camera up for filmmaking what we're gonna do real quick is we're gonna set up the custom number one and the custom number two now in the menu there's also another option that's called my menu I'm not gonna get into that but that's a way that you can customize even further but to set up number one and number two on a dial, the way I like to do it, number one, I like to have my 4K. Number two, I like to have 120 frames per second. Everybody's different. You might not want 120 frames per second. You might want 60 frames a second. It's all personal preference. The first thing we need to do, gotta turn it to movie mode. There we go. Focus, focus, focus. Gotta turn it to movie mode. The reason why we wanna turn it to movie mode is because you have to be in movie mode to get access to some of the video settings. So now that it's in movie mode, let's go ahead and press menu. We're gonna go to tab number two, and we want this right here to be manual exposure. Now, since I'm gonna do my number one, I wanna switch this to 4K. That's number one. The second thing I'm going to do is switch it to whether I want 24 or 30p, that's your preference. I'm going to do 24, I don't do slow and quick, I don't do proxy recording. I like to set my drive speed to fast, sensitivity to responsive, that's totally up to you. Audio recording levels, we'll talk about those in a second. I turn my wind noise reduction off, I don't mess with any of these settings, let's go over to the next one. Steady shot should be on unless you want to turn that off. Now, as far as any type of focus peaking or zebras, I have those set up for custom settings. So now that we have it in our settings, we got 4K, 24P, all that good stuff. The next thing you might want to do is change your picture profile. We're going to go down to page number 12. Now, white balance, I have set to auto. I'm going to show you how to change that in a second. Uh, D-Row, you always want that off. Creative style, you can leave standard. Now, picture effect, you want that off picture profile this is totally up to you so this is where you can pick like 
HLG or you could pick Senna. You could pick any of those different color gammas and color spaces. You could dig further into these menus, but what I want to do, since I'm happy with that, is change my shutter speed and all of that so that every time I go back to number one, my shutter speed is at least at the base correct. So we want our shutter speed to be double our frame rate. Since we are choosing 24 frames per second or whatever frame rate you're choosing, we're going to go ahead and adjust our shutter speed right now. So since I'm filming 24 frames a second, I'm going to go ahead and move that down to 1 50th of a second. Now, as far as aperture, that's totally up to you. I usually like to just have mine set wide open and I can adjust from there. And ISO, I usually set it at 100. Now, once you have that set up, let's go back into the menu. We're going to go to tab number one, page number three. From here, we're going to navigate down to memory number one and number two now because i want this to be my number one setting since we picked 4k i'm going to click on this i'm going to set this to number one once we set it to number one boom register so that's our number one for number two we're going to now go do the same thing so for number two if we want to switch this to let's just say hd and we want to go 120 frames per second 100 megabits per second we're going to select that there now because you already picked basically everything else you can kind of leave everything the same i mean if you want different picture profiles for your slow motion that's totally up to you but now we can go back to our home screen and because we know that we're shooting at 120 frames per second now we want to bump our shutter speed to at least 1 to 50th of a second we can leave everything else the same you can tinker with that stuff if you want to go back to the menu go back to tab number one page number three go back to memory now we're going to select spot number two boom register so now when we switch to number one we got our 4k when we switch to number two we got our 120 frames per second the good thing about this is let's just say you are out in a situation and you don't want 120p you want 60 frames a second you can still go into the menu and switch it to 60 frames a second for that particular instance. Once you turn off a of two and you go back to two, it's gonna default right back to your settings that you put in there, boom. So now we got our video settings set up. Now for photography, I just stick everything back in manual mode. Now let's go mess with all these custom buttons because it's custom buttons and switches and everything all over the place. I'll show you how mine is set up, then I'm gonna show you how to change it. On the top of the camera, you can see custom buttons. On the back of the camera, you got custom buttons. So let's roll through this real quick. For my custom number one, I have set to white balance. My custom number two, I have set the focus area. Custom number three, I have set the focus mode. Custom number four, I actually have mine switched to toggle, autofocus, and manual focus. Now, if you got a lens that doesn't have a switch on it for manual focus, that's super useful because in the field, if you're having focus problems or maybe you just want to have a manual shot where you get to pull the focus yourself and everything, boom, switches autofocus to manual focus. I have my dial right here set to shutter speed. I have my jog wheel set to ISO. On the wheel on the front I have set to aperture so my main three things that I need to change at any given time are right at my fingertips shutter speed ISO aperture on the front my center joystick right here I change that to my meter remote because there are times I want to change the meter remote while I'm shooting the left button on my jog wheel I actually have that set up to drive most so if I want to set up bracketing or self timers or anything like that boom display right here i left that default my function button is my custom menu which i'm going to show you how to set that up in a second so terry how do i set all these freaking buttons all right let's go to the menu hit menu we're going to go to tab number two and we're going to go to page eight out of nine now what this means right here where you see these different ones the landscape stands for your custom keys and photography the film strip stands for custom keys in your video the custom key for your play button stands for how do your custom keys act when you are inside of your play menu now i recommend having these set up the exact same way so you're not out in the field you're not confusing yourself switching to video mode freaking buttons over here photography mode custom buttons over there if you want to change your custom buttons this is how you do it right here so you literally just go through this stuff control wheel sets this right here custom button one sets this up here custom button two sets this up here so on and so forth you can set these up however you want to you can even set up the jog wheel buttons 
you can set up the buttons up here but you can go through and change that all you want to you can set up all of these custom keys all that good stuff to your liking now we have even more customization man you can hit the function button and now you can set up a mini menu right at your fingertips from the function button i have mine set up to zebras I have my subject detection when I want to switch it to animal eye autofocus or human right there. I have my picture profile selection right there. I have APS-C mode set up right here. I have my toggle for JPEG or JPEG RAW. The reason I do this is because clear image zoom doesn't work when you're shooting RAW. So when I know I want to use clear image zoom, I just flip that back to JPEG and I have my clear image zoom set up to boom, punch in right there. Now let's go back to the function menu at the bottom. I have my card prioritization settings. I have my grid lines. Ooh, super helpful for photography. If I want to set up silent shooting, I don't want to have to dig through a menu. I got that set up right on my function button. I could just flip silent shooting on and off. And last but not least, I have my gamma display assist, which I'm going to do a whole new video on because a lot of y'all don't know who shoot S log and all that stuff. There's a built in way you can kind of see what you're composing as far as exposure and all of that stuff in real time without having to look at an overexposed image while shooting S log. Boom. I bet you didn't know that. One thing I meant to tell you real quick, some of these will gray out if it doesn't apply to the mode that you selected. I hope this video at least helped point you in the right direction on how to set up your Sony camera, man. If y'all like this video, I will certainly do more. Let me know what you think in the comments. That's all I got for you today. Peace and chicken grease. I'm out. Peace.